Tonight is April the 30th, 2016. I've been experimenting a lot recently with uh, antennas, especially my 20 meter rotatable dipole. And uh, in particular, I have been most fascinated by the common mode chokes that we see and hear about and read about. Well, let's get right to the point here. What I'm going to try to do here, now I'm going to use this little Tentec Argosy uh, so I can generate just a little bit of RF. I've got some coax right here, as you can see, strung out. I've got it marked off in meters. We don't need to convert it to inches and all that stuff. And what I purchased was this little MFJ box, which is kind of cool. It's actually so very simple. The hard part to get I found was this piece right here. I haven't found a a um, a uh, ferrite core that opens up like this one does. There are schematics out there. It's just ultra simple, but it's not very sensitive. If you don't, if you want to use 100 watts or so, then it'll sort of work. But anyway, what I did is I went in and I fixed it so that when this switch is up into the red position, uh, this meter is disconnected and I get it out here and I can uh, plug it into my um, meter here in the millivolt scale and it works great. I know it's a little dark out here, but see, you can see that. I've actually made it, like I've done before, almost too sensitive. If I unplug it, this meter actually goes to zero. But it is sensitive enough, it's picking up uh, just a little bit of the RF out of the air. So I've got something really sensitive, and I like it. But i got to remember to subtract about 0.5 or 0.6 uh, from the result, which is uh, basically the zero mark. Okay, so what the point of this is going to be is I'm going to evaluate these two common mode chokes. This is a uh, this is nine feet of uh, 9913 coax. This is a little commercial made one made by uh, a nice reputable company that, that we all know of. I'm not going to mention names. It came in a um, a piece of PVC, and this was on one end, and, and this was this was one on the other. Another female here. I added the double male, so I can connect it up. Okay, but first of all, we gotta set our apparatus up. And what I've done here is um, at the end of the coax, I've got it terminated into a bird dummy load. So I got 50 ohms, and then I'm using my uh, capacitor, uh, my variable capacitor, for uh, so I can have some reactants. Uh, what I started out with was 500 ohms. I said, I thought, excuse me, 500 picofarads. So I had a, a, um, a complex impedance out here at the end of my coax of 50 uh, minus J22, I believe it is. That's what 500 picofarads will come out to be, what its reactance will be at 14.250 oh megahertz. So that's what we're going to be testing it at. Here's, a, here's another one of those coaxial chokes. Okay, so the first thing we do is, I don't know, what do we want to do? Show that uh, we get some reflected power here. And I'll, I'll show you here. It's going to be a little challenging with the camera and doing all this, but I'll do the best I can. I'm going to put this in. I'm running it into the dummy load as best I can. Crank up. Whoops. Well, that's not what I wanted, was it? I, get, I, better, I guess I got to check that first, huh? Be right back. Okay. All right. It, it was nothing serious. This is the on off switch right here. You pull it out to turn it off, you push it in to turn it on. I guess I had bumped it or something. It, it's okay. Okay. No, it's not okay, is it? I am, uh, it's just shutting itself. Anyway, I'll leave it right there. That's enough power for us to measure. It looks like it's uh, going into some sort of a protect mode. Plenty of power. Okay, let's, let's follow it out to our meter. Remember, our meter's clamped on right here. That's just a random point somewhere on the coax. This thing slides up and down the coax, and, and, and that's how we measure it. And we'll go over here to our meter and see that it's measuring, see a nice healthy strong signal, 51.2. 
Now I'm not going to be able to show you everything because I only have two hands here. But if I move this back over here, and as I start sliding this thing right here around, we'll be looking at the other meter, and you'll see. Oh damn! My uh, meter, my uh, this thing keeps going off. I guess it doesn't like that high SWR. I got to check this out. Okay, sorry for all the burps. It wasn't doing that on me earlier. I've got it turned down really low, just to five watts. Dropped it a little bit. I think it was up at about 10 or 15 a while ago, but it was going in some sort of protect mode. Anyway, there's our 43.2. I'm just gonna slide this around while we watch the meter, and you'll see that our common mode current goes down depending on where it is. And it's going to be lowest at, I think, about right there. That's 20.9. Uh, wish I had a cameraman. See, and that's starting to go back up 27. Anyway, so you can slide this thing around and find out where your, uh, where your lowest point is. Okay, so I think all I'm trying to prove right now and show you is, is that it works. It's actually worth something. And you, and you do get different readings of common mode current that's being emitted from the uh, shield of the coax. It's the standing wave. We're measuring the amplitude of the standing wave with this thing. And it's do, it works great. It is so much easier when I can use both hands. But anyhow, that's what it is. Um, let me show you a little program that you probably won't. Well, first of all, here's what we've got right now. We got our, we're driving it here. Let's turn this off. We're driving it with our 14.25 megahertz. We got a 50 ohm resistor for sure. Nice bird uh, 50 ohm resistor. And then we got a 500 picofarad capacitor. So our impedance is uh, Z equals 50 minus J22.34. The way that we get the 22.34 is this capacitor, 1 over 2 pi of C at 14.25 megahertz. Okay, now that we've got the 50 minus J22.34, we go over, get rid of all the advertisements, and here's a little program. If you Google um, how to convert um, complex impedance into Vizoir, you get this little program, really nice, made by that electronics company. Put in your source impedance, that's the coax, the load impedance is R. There is its, uh, I meant to shoot. I meant to put in a minus there. Let's put in a minus. Minus J2.34, and here's our, didn't really matter. And there is, um, there it is. There is its uh, scalar impedance, 54.76. Uh, reflection coefficient, these are 1.558, call it 1.6. Return loss, cool. Gives you what you want. See, we got an SWR about 1.6. I wanted it to be reasonable. You know, I don't want to burn up my little radio uh, doing this. So that's what we're dealing with right now. And we're going to leave it just like that. Okay. So the next thing to do is to go back out to the end of this coax. I'll make some more measurements, but but this is this is the focus of it. And without changing anything here, what I'm going to do is unscrew this and put in one of these chokes. They're both the same. And then I'm gonna put in this little commercial one, which is made out of ferrite beads. This is actually uh, one piece. It's just wrapped around. It's just folded. That's the way it is in the, uh, in the unit when you buy it. If I cut this little strap off, it just stretches out, you know. Oh, you know, about that long right there. Okay, so Let's go over there and measure it. Let's make a, a good measurement. We won't move anything. We gotta turn the transmitter back on. And then we'll remember this number. We'll write it down. We won't slide anything up and down at all. And our number right now, as you can see, is like 45.7 or eight. Maybe the power is increasing ever so slightly on the uh, 
if you look like it's stabilizing at about 46 point well maybe uh, things are heating up over there well you can see what it is 46 there we'll call it 47 okay now I'm going to turn it off 47 okay so we got 47 units of whatever running up and down our coax because of this mismatch here I'm going to have to stop the camera and I'm going to put one of these uh, chokes in here okay so now I've got the little store-bought choke in here remember a while ago we had 47 units I know this crazy experiment but I think it's worth something oh look we got a look at our, look our, our visual went way down our power went way up we solved a lot of problems 47 now look at it it's basically zero if you remember that's our zero point can you see that it eliminated it and our visoir went down so low that that our that 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 our our uh, units not kicking off line it worked okay it worked now I'm gonna take this one off and put on one of the little homemade woods I've made this is actually nine feet of 9913 I had a, I made a video sometime back about why I chose nine feet and I'm not going to go over that right now but I've seen some videos out there that say eh, it doesn't matter anything between 10 and 20 feet scramble winding it doesn't matter I think it matters let me show you okay now we've got the little uh, coaxial choke in there let's go back and turn it on again remember our zero point of just stuff it's picking up out of the air and detecting is is that look at there our power is good not kicking off line holy moly look at what we've got it's the same thing it's zero or thereabouts it actually is sensitive to me touching it and being in proximity to it so I have to just you know stay as far away from it as I can just to minimize this thing is just really sensitive okay it works it really eliminates it it eliminates that common mode current now I'm gonna slide this thing somewhere else on it let's slide it let's slide it over there that's at a point of uh, five meters away and uh, well, it rose ever so slightly but insignificant to slide it the other way and we'll slide this thing over here I don't want to jerk something loose either what is this this is at a this is at the four meter mark right here and uh, well it went up quite a bit there didn't it we're getting kind of close okay now this is part of the experiment and I actually had this thing around a around a point where it, where it was lowest I did that on purpose okay let's move it way down here and let's see what we've got 1.1 not much huh okay so the last part of this experiment is how long do we make the coax because it matters a little bit with the common mode choke it doesn't matter much at all I probably should have shown you I'll, I'll, I'll see if I can find the place without fumbling too much and, and show you just how ultra sensitive the length of the coax is if you don't use some sort of common mode choke so this little nine feet of 9913 or this little commercial made one which is not terribly expensive they do the same thing and one works as good as the other let me set it up for something else here now okay the next part is uh, as you can see I've taken the, uh, the common mode chokes off so we're hooked directly to our uh, to, uh, to our visual 1.6 and uh, <clears throat> here's the common mode current pretty close to a null see it's 7.45 see where it is right there right there at the, close to the four meter mark I'm gonna move it 
just a little bit, move it up there. See, so it went to get the glare off. Seven point, seven point, whatever that is, seven or eight. Let's move it back. I forgot what it was. Okay, now let's move it further down this way. Okay, see it's starting to go up. Nine point nine, ten. See where it is now. I'm going to move it. Move it further down there. Whoa, look, it went way up. 27. It becomes ultra critical. But I'm looking up there. Nothing significant fell off. Uh, so the length of your coax starts becoming highly critical. And you're just simply not going to be lucky enough without measuring to uh, get exactly the right length. See, 28. Okay, let me move it back down here. Make sure that nothing up there fell off yet. See there? Going down to the 10 or 11. Like I say, everything matters a little bit. Move it way over there. See, so it goes back up. But moving it a little too, too close to the load, it's just trying to deal with a uh, an antenna without something to mitigate the uh, common mode current is just kind of crazy. Let's stop there for a second. Okay, I've left the sensor way down the coax area at one of, you know, something close to one of its low points of uh, 8.3. Just again, and just a relative number. And I'm see, I've got this thing set on the, the 500 picofarad. I'm going to start cranking this and watch what happens here uh, when you start changing or you don't know what the um, the reactance is at the end of it on your antenna well you know what I've actually got it at a low point I think nothing's changing maybe I turned the damn thing off no I didn't yeah, there it is it was loose there a little bit okay so it's at 97 yeah see there Crazy, huh? There it is at 25. And all I'm, all I'm doing is changing the capacitance by doing this. See, I can tune it down to something pretty low. But, of course, I can't do that. at the, And then after I get past some point, it's, it's going to start going back up. Well, no, that's it maxed out right there. That's the most capacitance I could put in it, so that would get its visa work down. But as this reactant starts going up, then the common mode current flowing in the coax goes straight up there you go well the reason I'm doing this is because there are so many articles on common mode current some of them are so mathematically complicated I can't I can't deal with them and some of them are just guesswork it's just where people have make an opinion well, this I it could, I'm quite happy with this. This is conclusive to me. I mean, there are a bunch of more measurements we could uh, we could make, but um, the point being is if you actually do use some sort of a common mode uh, choke uh, coil up at your antenna. This is remember this is our antenna. This is the end of the coax at our antenna. Store bought, homemade. 9 feet of 9913. If you do L and C, you'll find out that it's closely resonant there. Not exactly, but it's going to be uh, series resonant. Or, excuse me, it's going to be parallel resonant. So it's going to have no effect, essentially, on the frequency that it's resonant at. If it were series resonant, it'd be shorting it out. But if it's parallel resonant, it's, it's going to be like an open circuit. I can prove that to you, uh, for it, what it's closely resonant to. It's not exactly resonant 14.25, but let's go in and, and, and hook this guy right here up to a little uh, uh, good depth meter. Okay, well, to go ahead and bring this video to a close, uh, I'm not going to show you all of the measurements I've made and everything, because it just it just draws it out to, to a point that, that's not necessary. If I uh, measure this with uh, this little uh, grid dip meter, it ends up being resonant around 
21 megahertz. This one around 75 megahertz. But they both do the same thing. I've been doing these experiments several times recently and uh, in spite of all the fumbling I did tonight, I actually ended up finally uh, answering a question that I had that, that I had some problem reconciling and, and that is when I slide this little meter up and down the coax to my antenna system which is kind of difficult because it's, I, it's kind of hard to access the, uh, the coax I got low readings but I use exactly one of these chokes on mine and it just uh, mitigates the uh, common mode current so much that the measurements and the length of the, the measurements become smaller and the length of the coax certainly appears to become less critical uh, making the exact length of the coax a half wavelength I still think is important not a quarter wavelength if you make it an even number of quarter wavelengths see an even number quarter wavelength is a half wavelength so any number of half wavelengths is the same thing and you'll end up uh, at the end of your coax what you have at the other end at that frequency so it is important I think it does matter so um, there are some other uh, challenges out there and one of them being uh, what is the radiation resistance of your antenna well we know that theoretically and everybody agrees on this and you'll 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 find it on many articles that the radiation resistance of uh, a dipole is around 73 ohms well essentially I think for all practical purposes the radiation resistance is pretty much equal to and can I think you can be happy with the R part of the complex impedance in my case it ends up being about 65 ohms I've measured it over and over and over with different meters and it, it just ends up there so I'm I'm perfectly happy with it let's see um, that's the radiation resistance uh, well I guess that's about it I just wanted to make this because uh, like I say that there is there's just a lot of head scratching um, information out there that just doesn't make sense to me so uh, anyway there it is I hope it helps this is a, a, a jewel I picked up just recently on eBay that's what I was using to measure this thing a while ago and I started making some videos of it and I said ah, you don't want to see all that anyway for the ham radio operators I think I'm gonna put this guy right here back in my old 30k1 cabinet this thing is absolutely beautiful in there I have no idea why I disassembled it I built it way back uh, probably in the 70s late 70s but I'm gonna put it back together big choke uh, the uh, filament choke and everything is underneath it oh yeah I wanted to, this is something I wanted to show you these capacitors right here these old uh, Sangamo if that's how you pronounce it this capacitor right here see this is from the input that drives it goes up over there I was I measured it the other day and this is supposed to be I think a one zero uh, point zero zero one thousand picofarads I think it measures about 17 picofarads darn thing is opened I've been running into that kind of stuff lately of course when I built this thing 35 or plus years ago it was good I guess <laughs> I did everything to measure it back then but anyway it worked and now I measured it and it's uh, basically opened up so I guess what I'm experiencing now and and want to share with you is the things that were good even the really high quality stuff that was good 35 years ago may be not so good anymore and the things that were good 35 years ago like those capacitors are actually out of World War II surplus stuff so they were actually made in the 1940s so they were like 35 years old when I got them and they were good and now they're 70 years old and they're not good so be careful these right here I haven't found any of these going bad yet these uh, uh 
thousand picofarad capacitors and what have you. But uh, I'm beginning to experience more and more bad capacitors. As a matter of fact, when I got this guy right here, I changed out the electrolytics in it, and I also changed out the selenium rectifier. This thing works really nice. Isn't that a beauty? So I hope this helps the uh, antenna community. Here's another thing for measuring your, uh, well, it took the battery out, for measuring the uh, length of your coax. You really do want to know the length of your coax. I, I think the, sim the simple answer to a, a dipole is to use the old formulas 468 over F for feet or 5616 over F in megahertz for the length in inches and then you want to use some kind of a choke that you can make for basically zero money because you already have some of this and um, then do the best you can at determining the length of it. You gotta, you gotta even remember you always have to know the uh, velocity factor. The old velocity factors, uh, the velocity factors of the old coax is around 0.66, but all this new stuff is 0.84. See, this is, um, I don't know if you'll be able to read this or not. This is LMR 400 dB. It even has date codes on it. Date codes that you can read. It's made in 2014. If you look up the uh, the characteristics of this stuff, uh, it's got a uh, a sticky um, gel type of substance underneath it and this stuff is basically guaranteed for 20 years outside in the elements now this is USA made stuff this is made by Times Microwave and it's about a dollar a foot but you know what if you got a hundred feet of coax between your your rig and your antenna and you have to spend a hundred dollars every 20 years to have the best then why not and then my last comment, I can't help but make this. There's always this thing of, oh, everybody needs to use open wire because it is so low loss. Well, you know, if you've got an antenna farm like Voice of America, then by all means, you know, run big ceramic insulators, feed throughs uh, through your walls and everything, and by all means use open wire. But if you don't and you have to have your rig in a basement like I do, then you use this coax and I'm here to tell you that if you look up the specs the loss at HF 3 to 30 megahertz on this coax is so low that open wire isn't going to make it any lower and you're not going to get any more DX contacts or anything else I hope you know what I mean this is good stuff the things we have nowadays this coax is great even some of the old coax some of the really high-end coax, like I have gotten uh, surplus from White Sands. When I worked out there, the RG9BU, it's a double silver-plated uh, shield with a silver-plated interconductor, a non-contaminating uh, jacket at, uh, at at HF. It's as good today as it was when it was new. And of course, you know, you got to remember that they replace that stuff regularly, whether it in our opinion it needs replacing or not but you don't want a few hundred dollars worth of coax uh, to not collect data on a multi-million dollar missile shot so there you go hope you enjoy this I have fun doing it I have uh, satisfied my own curiosity on uh, common mode chokes and I hope I've kept it simple enough that it's useful to uh, other ham radio operators and, and such Thanks for watching.